You've probably first heard of a sticky bomb from Saving Private Ryan, but this idea in the movie wasn't unrealistic or unreasonable. Sticky bombs did exist during World War II. The British had a sticky bomb known as the Number 74 anti-tank hand grenade, commonly known as the ST grenade, or simply sticky bomb. Sticky bomb, sir? Sir, are you making that up? The real sticky bomb was developed in part due to a scramble by the British arms industry to rearm the British army due to the loss of significant equipment in France after the Dunkirk evacuation, where 840 anti-tank guns were left behind, leaving only 167 available in all of Britain. A sticky situation indeed. We're in the stickiest situation since Sticky the Stick Insect got stuck on a sticky bun. Luckily, sticky bombs are fairly easy to make. 2.5 million sticky bombs would be produced between 1940 and 1943. The grenade was a glass sphere containing 560 grams of a nitroglycerin compound. Key to the design was a mesh sock covered in a strong adhesive. This would be exposed by shedding a sphere of sheet metal, which would fall away when the user pulled a pin on the handle of the grenade. Once that was done, another pin would be pulled to arm the firing mechanism before the user would throw the sticky bomb at an enemy tank or vehicle. Like a Mills or Mark II grenade, letting go of the handle would release a lever that would activate a five-second fuse. Then hopefully the bomb would explode, stuck to its target. The grenade had several drawbacks. One major and potentially deadly one was that it could get stuck to a soldier's uniform. The casing could be hard to remove, and some soldiers would hold the grenade between their legs and pry the cover off, which could result in the bomb sticking to trousers. And there is at least one documented instance of a soldier successfully throwing his trousers along with the grenade. The most common problem was a soldier sticking the grenade to their back during an overhand throw. Hey, Lenny, can you get this sugar daddy off my back? Despite being too sticky to use at times, the bomb also proved not sticky enough. It could fail to adhere to tanks that were dirty, like most tanks in combat. Throwing the grenade at a tank was less reliable than placing it on top. Ideal was throwing the bomb downwards towards a tank, such as in an urban setting. The grenade was actually rejected at first by the Ordnance Board of the War Department, but Prime Minister Winston Churchill favoured the design, wanting to immediately arm Britain against tanks, fearing new Blitzkrieg-style tactics. The bomb was effective against about one inch of armour, but it did have the benefit of potentially creating spall, or a metal fragment spray inside a tank, as its jelly-like explosive liquid closely covered its target, meaning much of the concussive force transferred through the armor towards the inside of a tank. The sticky bomb did see some action. It knocked out a few tanks in North Africa and was used on the Anzio beachhead and during the New Guinea campaign. They even made their way into the hands of French resistance fighters. But it was primarily issued to the Home Guard, in part because of its glass component, it didn't travel well. Weapons like the sticky bomb and German magnetic mines were cheap to make but often too dangerous to use, with only minor improved effectiveness over the various manufactured and improvised Molotov cocktails widely used during the war. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.